In this section, we're looking at graphing general rational functions. So we have a, uh, a list here of things we need, the characteristics of the graph that are going to be useful for us in order to graph it. So we first start off with we have f of x equals uh, p of x over q of x. And we should note here that just means we're going to be doing a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And then we've expanded out a general form for each polynomial, p of x being that top with the a's, m's, x's, um, and then the bottom one, q of x, we have b and, and x to the n. And this just gives us the general form. What we really need from this is going to be this lead term. Because this lead term we're going to find helps us out um, down below on the characteristics uh, and specifics to the horizontal asymptotes. So if we look at the characteristics of the graph of f of x. So the first thing we get is the x-intercepts, or where it hits, hits the x-axis. That's going to be the real zeros of p of x. So whatever polynomial p of x is, we're going to set it equal to 0. We're going to factor and we're going to find all the solutions. Uh, that will tell us where it hits the x-axis. Uh, for vertical asymptotes, we're going to take each real 0 from q of x. So then we take the denominator, we factor that if needed, uh, we set it equal to 0, and we're going to solve for that one. And that's going to give us our vertical asymptotes. Which kind of makes sense because if anything gave uh, q of x 0, then in that case, it wouldn't be uh, defined at that point, so it would be a vertical asymptote. And then the last one is the uh, horizontal asymptotes. And this one, we're going to look at the degree of our lead numbers. So I have x to the m and x to the n up above. So if m is less than n, so let's say we have uh, something like 2x squared over... Uh, x cubed, but there's more to it after that. It's not just those two terms, it's plus the rest of the terms working down the polynomial. But that's the lead term, that's the, uh, that's the, the, highest, the highest degree each has. So m is less than n because 2 is less than 3, this 2, this 3, we should say. So if that's the case, then y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. Okay? So it's going to go through that y equals 0, it's going to be on the x-axis. Now, if we had a polynomial where m is equal to n, so this is one where maybe it's x squared over x squared, and then we got the more to that, but we're not worried about the rest of that stuff, it's that lead term, then our asymptote is going to be the coefficients that we get on the lead terms. So because they're both to the second, then our asymptote is going to be their coefficients, so that would be 3 over 2, and that's where we'd have a horizontal asymptote when y equals 3 over 2. So by the degree of the exponents, it tells us that since they're the same, we have a horizontal asymptote, but then their coefficients tell us where that's at. Now, the last one, if m is greater than n, and this would be one where maybe it's, uh, we'll go 3x cubed over x squared. Let me go on from there. Works its way down. So this one, the graph is going to have no horizontal asymptote, so that's out. But it's going to have an end behavior that matches another graph. And this kind of gives us a reference to what it's going to look like. So I have this written here. It's going to be y equals, so a sub m, b over n is the lead terms, so that's 3 and 1, because really this is 1x squared then x to the m minus n, and that's the degree, so it'd be x to the 3 minus 2. So we simplify that, and it comes out to be y equals 3x. So if this was the case, it's going to tell us that this graph is going to have an end behavior, or an asymptote with the same behavior as uh, y equals 3x. Well, what does y equal 3x look like? Well, it's a, it's a line we would graph. Its slope is 3. It goes up 3 over 1. So that tells us the graph is going to have that behavior. So maybe it does some other stuff, but it's going to come from the negative, do something, and then exit in the positive. Now maybe I do this problem and I get that the end behavior is y equals negative x. Well, if it was negative x, that would say it would go in this direction. So it comes in, it does some stuff, and it exits in that direction. So it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote, but it gives us an idea for the behavior to expect from it. So these are the different parts we have, and we're going to get various equations, and we're going to find each thing, x-intercepts, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, 
get us a general idea for the graph, and then we can plot some points and graph it. So that's really what we're going to go back to. So hopefully, maybe copy this down or have this next to you, and as we work our way through them. So we get to our first example, which is y equals 2x squared over x squared minus 9. And we're just going to work our way through and find the parts that we need. So the first thing we get is the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts we get when it's 2x squared equals 0. It's our solutions or our zeros for that numerator. Well, that becomes x squared equals 0, so x equals 0. So our x-intercept is when x equals 0. So let's go over and we'll make a graph here, some axes. So we know when x is 0, it's going to hit the x-axis. Gives us a good start. All right, back over here. Next piece we had is the vertical asymptotes. And to get the vertical asymptotes, we are going to find the solutions for the denominator. Or, like we've seen before, what makes the denominator 0. So to do that, I'm going to do x squared minus 9 equals 0. Now I can factor that. I get x plus 3, x minus 3. So that tells me my vertical asymptotes are plus or minus 3. So I can go over to my graph, and I'm going to draw in some asymptotes. Negative 3, positive 3. And I'm going to label them just so I know what I'm looking at. x equals negative 3 x equals positive 3. So we can kind of see, we know what's going to hit at uh, the origin, and we know the graph isn't going to cross those lines, it's going to be undefined at those points. So next we get the horizontal, or the horizontal asymptotes. So for this one, we have to figure out what, ish, what case we have for the degrees. So we have uh, 2x squared on the top, x squared on the bottom. So that means that the degrees are equal. It's that m equals n because 2 equals 2. So when that's the case, we know that the horizontal asymptote is the lead coefficients for that. Well, since it's 2 and 1, my horizontal asymptote is when y equals 2. So I'm going to label that one. All right, so there are my asymptotes. I have all the parts that I can start with. Now I got to solve for it. I got to find other points and start plotting. So I'm just going to kind of list out, make a chart here, x and y. Now things I already know. I know at 0, 0, I hit the point. I know at negative 3 and positive 3 for x, I'm not going to hit have anything. It's going to be undefined. But I want some general idea for where it goes. So points that I would like to know. Let's say um, 1 and 2, as well as negative 1, positive 2, because that's going to give me an idea between that negative 3, positive 3, what's occurring. And then maybe on the outside, um, 4 and 5 would help, as well as negative 4, negative 5. And that's going to give me an idea on the other side of those asymptotes of the behavior. So I start plugging them in. If I plug in 1, I get 2 over 1 minus 9. So we get negative one-fourth. If I plug in two, you get eight-fifths, negative eight-fifths, which is about negative 1.6. Okay, if I plug in negative one, well, if I square negative 1, it's positive, so that's actually going to turn out to be the same as positive 1, so negative 1 fourth, and then even 2 works the same way, it should be negative 2, negative 8 fifths, it should be 1.6, I don't know why we're at 1.61, let's get rid of that. Alright, so now let's plot what we got so far. So. Uh, 1, negative 1 fourth, and then 2, negative 1.6. So 
So just by that, I can kind of see that the graph looks like it's going to follow this general sketch in between the negative 3, positive 3. So now it's finding with uh, 4. So I plug in 4 here, and I get 4 squared is 16, times 2 is 32. So that's going to be 32. And then 16 minus 9 gives me 7, which is 32 over 7. is about 4.6. Now, same as what we found with the negative 1, negative 2, that's actually going to be the same for negative 4. Now, realize this is not always the case, but since I am squaring the negatives here, they do work out to be the same in this case. So I get 4.6. And now I go to 5. 5 squared times 2 is 50, and that's going to be over 25 minus 9, which is 16. So 50 over 16 which is also 25 over 8, which is about 3.1. Negative 5 will give us the same. So now I can go up and plot my points. So I have 4 is at 4.6. So we'll put it right there. And then 5 is at 3.1. right there. So it looks like it comes in, follows that behavior, and we'll go to the other side. And we mark the same points. And we have our behavior on that side. Keep in mind it should be going up to the asymptotes. It doesn't go at the asymptotes. And we get our general sketch for the graph. Okay, now we go to the next one. So first thing we start with is our x-intercepts. I'm going to take x squared plus 3x minus 4 and set it equal to 0. I get x minus 4. Try again, x plus 4, x minus 1. So my x-intercepts are negative 4, positive 1. My vertical asymptotes are going to be x minus 2 equals 0. So that's x equals 2. And for my horizontal asymptotes, since we have, in this one, uh, m is greater than n, the top degree is greater, we don't have any horizontal asymptote, but the graph's n behavior is going to follow y equals the lead coefficients, 1 over 1, then x to the 2 minus 1, which becomes y equals x. Now, if we just sketch that off to the side, y equals x is the line that looks like that. Positive slope, up 1, over 1. So that's going to have a uh, end behavior for our graph that's going to follow that idea. So let's draw some axes here. And draw what we know. So we know uh, at x equals 2, we have an asymptote. We know we have zeros at 1 and negative 4, and we're going to graph here. So before we start plotting points, let's just think of what could go on here. Now we know it's not going to go to the asymptote. We know we have to hit those two points, negative 1, or positive 1, negative 4. So maybe the graph comes in and does something like that, which could fit. Hit the two points, go to the asymptote. Maybe it comes in and does something along that lines. Okay, may fit that. So we want to see what goes on between 1 and negative 4, and probably something that goes on uh, less than negative 4, just to give us an idea for the points. And then we have the question of what goes on out here, because we know it doesn't hit the x-axis, but it has to do something, because it's not like it ends. There's no, nothing else after that, so we're going to have to try some points uh, greater than 2. So we got x, y. So I'm going to start with uh, 0. 0 is a good place to start. If we plug in 0, and when I do this, I'm going to use the factored form of this, which is x plus 4, x minus 1, over x minus 2. 
So we plug in 0. Looks like we get 4 times negative 1 over negative 2, which comes out to be 2. We plug in a, uh, we'll go negative 1. So we get 3 times negative 2 over negative 3, which also gives us 2. Let's plug in negative 2 for x. 2 times negative 3 over negative 4. You get 1.5. And let's go negative 3. And that'll help us out here. So we get 1. Uh, minus 4 and minus 5. And that comes out to be about 0.8. So we plug them in. So we look here, we got 0, 2, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 1, and a half, and negative 3.8. So we can kind of see a, a, a trend that's happening here. Now let's pick another point, maybe negative 5, that's on the outside, just to confirm we're going in the right direction. So I get plug in negative 5. So let's see, we'd get negative 1 on top times negative 6 over negative 7 comes out to be about negative 0.9 as an approximation. So we plug that one down here, and it looks like our graph comes in, turns, and heads down, which it fits. It fits to what we want. So now we need to figure out what's going on on the right side. So I'm going to take 3, 4, and 5 and plug them in. So if I plug in 3, I get 7 times 2 over 1, which is 14. If I plug in 4, I get 8 times 3 over 2. Looks like 12. And if I plug in 5, I get 9. That would be 4 and 3. That comes out to be 12. So we plot these points. We've got to count quite a ways up here. So we've got 314. Here, 412 and 512. Now we can keep going there, and what we'll actually see is that this graph comes in and follows that behavior, if we kept going. Now, let's go back to that horizontal asymptote. We don't have one, but we said it follows the same behavior as y equals x, which if we graph, here's a line that follows that, and we can see it does match up to those asymptotes. Now, it didn't give us the exact location, but with plotting enough points, we could sketch to see where they actually go. So we do have an asymptote there that the graph does go up to the vertical asymptote and follows throughout. Okay, let's look at another one. So, I'm going to start with uh, x-intercepts here. x-intercepts, I factor the top, I get negative 2 equals 0, so I have none because that's no solution. I uh, look at vertical asymptotes. I'm going to take x plus 2, or x squared plus 2, set it equal to 0. I get x squared equals negative 2, which is not going to give me a real number, because that's i root 2, so I have none there. Okay, then we go to a horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, let's see here. We have the uh, degree on the bottom is greater than the one on the top. 
So when we have that, that was our first condition, so that means y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote. So let's plot our graph, draw our graph here. We have y equals 0 as an asymptote, so it's not going to cross that, which kind of makes sense. We didn't have any x-intercepts, so it seems like the asymptote would go through uh, y equals 0. And we're going to plot some points. So I don't have any that don't work for uh, x, so really I could pick any I want. We should start with 0. If I plug in 0, I get negative 2 over 2. It's negative 1. If I plug in 1, I get negative 2 over 1 plus 2, which is negative 2 thirds. If I plug in 2, I get negative 2 over 4 plus 2. which looks like negative one-third. Uh, what if we went uh, negative one? Plug in negative one. Well, I square it again. That's going to come out to negative two-thirds the same, as well as negative two. So we go to plot some points, and we see, well, it's actually pretty close here. Zero, one. One negative two-thirds. Two negative a third. And it's actually just going to get closer and closer to the asymptote as it goes. So that's really our graph for that one. So let's keep going, looking at some more. So these are the next four we're going to do. Maybe you pause the video, try these on your own, and uh, then we can go through and check to see what we got. So first one I'm going to do, I go through and I see that my x-intercepts it's going to be, I take x squared minus 5, set that equal to 0. I get x squared equals 5, so my intercepts are at plus or minus the square root of 5. My vertical asymptote, I take x squared plus 1, set that equal to 0. I get x squared equals negative 1. So that one's not going to work, actually, because I get an imaginary solution. My horizontal asymptote, if we look here, I have the same degree, it's both x squared, so my horizontal asymptote is going to be the leading coefficient, so 1 over 1, so it's just 1. So, we go to graph. So we know we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And we know we have x-intercepts at the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 5, just for the sake of trying to figure out where we're going here, let's approximate that. It's about 2.2. So we know it's going to hit somewhere about 2.2 and then negative 2.2. So I need some points to plot. Now, again, we don't have any x's that don't work, so we can really pick any. Might as well pick some nice ones here. We'll start with uh, 0. If we plugged in 0, we'd get negative 5 over 1, so that's just negative 5. If we picked 1, we would get negative 4 over 2, so that's negative 2. If we picked 2, we would get 4 minus 5, and then 4 plus 1, that becomes negative 1 over 5, so it looks like negative Point two or negative one fifth. Uh, let's look on the other side. So let's say negative one. Well, if I square that, it becomes uh, one minus five, and one plus two, or one plus one, we should say. So that comes out to be negative two as well, as well as negative two comes out to be negative point two. Okay, so let's see what we got so far. Negative point five. Oops, I'm off the graph here. We'll say it's be right there. Negative 1, negative 2, right there. Okay, negative 2.2. Well, it looks like it's getting close to that intercept, which fits. So why don't we try out 3? If we try out 3, we get 9 minus 5 over 9 plus 1, which turns out to be 4 fifths, or 4 tenths, 4 tenths. So that's 0.4. Plot that right there. 
and we start to see that it's going to follow this sketch. Okay, let's go to our next one here. So we start off with the basics. We want to find our x intercepts. If I factor, I get x, well, let's see, x squared minus 2x minus 5. You know, let's make this one a little change here. Let's, just for the sake of understanding the basics, we're going to get rid of that 5, and we're going to make that a 3. So now we can factor it down a little bit nicer because we don't want to get lost in, in the factoring. We just really want to focus on the graphing. So if it's x squared minus 2x minus 3, I'm going to be x minus 3 and x plus 1 equals 0. So that means my two x-intercepts are positive 3, negative 1. Now my vertical asymptote is I take x minus 4, set it equal to 0, so it comes out to be x equals 4. And my horizontal asymptote, well, let's see, we have an x squared on top, x on the bottom, so m is greater. So we're going to say there is no horizontal asymptote, but the end behavior is going to be same as the graph where we do 1 over 1, leading coefficients, x to the 2 minus 1, which becomes y equals x. So it's going to follow that behavior. It's going to come up from the negative and exit on the positive on, on our graph that we use. So let's get some axes here. We want to start with our x-intercepts at positive 3, negative 1. We have a vertical asymptote at 4. Let's move that over a little bit. Try again. I'm going to attach to the x there. There we go. Works a little bit better. And now we can start picking some points. So I'm going to pick uh, maybe 0, 1, 2, uh, negative 2. Does this give me a good idea what's going on for the left side of the graph? Then after that, I would think I want to see 4 and 5. And if that's enough, then we'll be done. But it's, we may have to go on a little bit further. And as I solve these, remember, we can always factor this down if it makes it easier to deal with the factors. x minus 3, x plus 1, over x minus 4. So we plug in 0. We get negative 3 plus 1. and then negative 4. This simplifies to be uh, 3 fourths, or 0.75. If we plug in a 1, we get negative 2, 2, and negative 3, which comes out to be 4 thirds, or about 1.3. If we plug in a 2, we get negative 1, 3, and negative 2, which comes out to be 3 halves, or about 1.5. So if we sketch this out here, we have 0 at 0.75, 1 at 1.3, 1, 1 1.3, and then 2 at 1.5. Okay, I'm starting to see a general idea here. Let's check out negative 2. For negative 2, we get negative 5, negative 1, and negative 6. Looks like it's going to be negative 5, 6, which, as I'll write that, negative 5, 6, which is approximately negative 0.8. Just to give us an idea on the graph, put it right there. So we see our graph, looks like it's going to come up hit our points, and then head down along the uh, asymptote. So now we need some points on the other side of it to give us an idea, but kind of have an idea already to where it's going. If we were to maybe draw this line off of that, it gives us an idea. It's probably going to be above uh, 5 or 6 up in that top corner. So I take 4, 
plug that in, I get 1, 5, 0, which should make sense. It should be undefined. Oh, we should have saw that one. It's our vertical asymptote. We don't want that. We should try 5. So if we try 5, we get 2, 6, and 1, which comes out to be 12. And let's try points. When x is 6, we get 3, 7, and 2. Looks like we get 21 over 2, which is about 10.5. So we go to 512. We're going to go up quite a bit. Right in the middle of what we have simplified. So let's just get rid of that. Try again. go 5 12 and then 6 10.5 and if we get 7 we would have 4 times 8 over 3 which is 32 over 3 which is about 10.6 should be about here and we can even start to see that our graph would follow down this way go off there. So maybe we're off a little bit on this line. Let's move that out. And we can kind of draw on a new one here and it looks like maybe to follow a little more to that design. So we sketch it, we have our asymptotes, plot those points. When it's not a horizontal asymptote in that sense, when it's going to have that end behavior, you can want to plot some points and then you can kind of accurately draw that in. Because we don't know where it's going to go, but we know it's going to follow that general behavior of y equals x. Okay, oh, skipped a couple here. Let's go back to these. So, first one up here. We have 4 over x squared plus 2. We're going to find our zeros, or our x-intercept. Well, that's going to be when 4 equals 0. That doesn't work, so we have none. We look for our vertical asymptotes. That's when we get x squared plus 2 equals 0. Uh, well, that's going to be a negative solution because we get x squared minus 2. Did we do this one already? No. Doing the right one, just looks, sounds familiar. X minus 2 equals 0, x squared equals negative 2. So we come out to get x equals the square root of negative 2. Not a real solution, so that's a none. And then we have our horizontal asymptotes. If we look at this one, the degree on the bottom is greater than the top. If the degree on the bottom is greater, then y equals 0 is our asymptote. So we're going to plug in some values here for x and y. So I have no x-intercepts. I now have, have no vertical asymptotes. So let's just start with 0. I plug in 0, I get 4 over 2, which is 2. If I plug in 1, I get 4 over 3. If I plug in 2, I get 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds, or 3 halves, try again. 4 over 6 would be, yes, 2 thirds, there we go. Uh, if I plug in 3, I get 4 over 9 plus 2, that's 4 elevenths, and we can see it's getting smaller. If we went through and looked at the positive or the negatives as well, it turns out that they are the same as their positives. So then we can draw in our axes. y equals 0 is an asymptote, and then our points are at 0, 2, 1, 4 thirds, and negative 1, 4 thirds on either side, and 2, 2 thirds, And 3 is be 4 elevenths. So we're getting closer and closer as we go. We can sketch, and we can see our graph is going to follow that behavior. All right, our last one here. We've kind of jumped around a little bit, but we've seen a good variety of the examples. So we start with our x-intercepts. 
So when 3x squared equals 0, we get that x equals 0. If we look at our vertical asymptotes, when we have x squared minus 1 equals 0, we get x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0. So we're going to get x asymptotes at, uh, vertical asymptotes at plus or minus 1. And then our horizontal asymptotes, since they're the same, we go back to our list here, it's just going to be the lead coefficient. So it's going to be y equals 3 over 1, or just 3. So let's sketch out what we got. Uh, we have our vertical asymptotes at plus or minus 1. We have our horizontal at 3. So we need to plot some points. Forgot my x-intercept. It's, it's at 0. Okay. So if x and y. All right. Well, I need to figure out what's going on between 0 and 1. So maybe I'll plug in a uh, 1 half and look at those fractions. But before we get to that, let's just look on the outside because that'll give us a good idea because I'm pretty certain I can guess that it's going to follow this behavior. But if we look on the outside, we need to look when x is 2. So when x is 2, we get 4 times 3 on top, or 12. And then we get 4 minus 1 on bottom. So that's 3. So 12 over 3 gives us 4. So we come to point 2, 4, which fits there. If we did negative 2, it would also come out to be positive 4 fits there. If we did 3, we'd get 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27 over 9 minus 1, or 27 over 8, which is about 3.375. The negative would also do that, so 3.375 will go about here, and we can see it's going to start following the asymptotes in that order in that order. You can go through and you can plug in uh, your values between 0 and 1 to find the approximates, a little more approximate values, but we see it is going to follow um, in the middle section. It's going to go in that negative. Uh, but the key thing is we're plotting points, we're confirming where it fits. Keep those asymptotes in mind and then we'll get a general approximation for the sketch. So I hope that helps.